Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and today we are tier ranking Pioneer decks based on their potential to work in the Explorer format. So if you missed a big announcement a few days ago, we're getting Pioneer Light on Magic Arena. The Explorer format is literally Pioneer, but with the cards that are currently on Arena, why we wait for Wizards to add more cards to actually finish the format and get full Pioneer. So eventually, Explorer is going to be literal Pioneer, but for the time being, it's its own thing. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go through every single deck in Pioneer that's at least 1% of the meta, which is almost 20 different decks and we're going to tier rank whether they have a chance to make it in the explorer format because right now explorer is like half of pioneer roughly so a decent amount of cards are missing some decks don't care at all they lose basically nothing and are probably going to be really good in explorer other pioneer decks lose too many pieces and probably aren't going to exist at all so here is our tier ranking we have ranks from double s down to f double uh, s is like my picks for best decks in the explorer format s tier tier one decks really good decks a tier decks probably going to be part of the meta but got to replace at least some cards b tier decks are maybe going to make it in the meta they have at least some big pieces that are missing c tier decks that's where it gets really sketchy kind of like eh, maybe if you brew hard enough you can kind of make this work but you're missing some really big pieces and then finally f tier decks they're not going to exist. They're missing a key combo piece, a key card, many cards. That means they just aren't going to be able to do their thing in the Explorer format. So that's the overview. Let's jump into the deck list. We got a bunch to talk about. Before we do, a super quick reminder. If you need some Pioneer cards, you can get them from our awesome sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to cardkingdom.com slash mtgoldfish and even get a free goldfish sticker. Just let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up. Anyway, let's tier rank Pioneer decks for Explorer. So first off, we have two decks that I'm putting at double S tier. These are the two decks that I think right out of the gate in the Explorer format are going to be the two best decks in the format. In double S tier, these decks get special recognition because not only do they need basically no changes to pour over from Pioneer into Explorer, but they're also arguably the two best decks in full Pioneer. If you look at the full Pioneer meta, uh, the top tier really is Nio Inota, Mono Red Aggro in Azurius Control. I think in some order, those are the best decks in the format, uh, with Lenota maybe being a little bit ahead in terms of power level, but Blue White also being really good. Mono Red kind of competing with the control decks. So we have at the very top of our list, first off, Nia Winota. So you're probably thinking, wait a minute, aren't there a few cards that don't make it? Elvish Mystic, Voice of Resurgence, uh, Mana Confluence. We're not super concerned about lands. Uh, there's very easy replacements and that's a one of anyway. So you're probably thinking, wait a minute, this is losing some cards. Are you not worried about that? And it is true that this build of Winota, which is probably the most popular build, does lose a couple of things. Elvish Mystic, easy replacement with Gilded Goose. Voice of Resurgence doesn't really have an easy replacement. However, there are multiple builds of Winota. In this build, for example, which recently won a tournament doesn't play any cards that are not going to be on magic arena and not going to be in the explorer format you can already see gilded goose as part of the mana base and then rather than using voice resurgence for control hey it's using like archon of amiria's redains a blade historian for a faster clock so the fact that you can take probably the best deck in full pioneer and play it with a literally zero changes in explorer definitely puts naya winota as a double s tier deck the other double s tier deck is blue white control blue white control it's a yarion deck it does technically lose a card it loses supreme verdict but supreme verdict is super replaceable why is true we don't have another uncounterable wrath like supreme verdict we do have a million four mana wraths that are on magic arena so i think that this is a pretty easy swap especially considering every other card in the entire 95 is in the explorer format so i think that this along with naya winota is going to be the two top tier decks i think these are the two best decks in the format right out of the gate. The reason I think that what Nio and Noda might be even better is it gets a little bump in best of one. If you're in best to one, it's really hard to hate on Winota. I guess control is good against it. Instant speed removal counter is good against it, but it's much harder to hate on a Winota deck in a best of one format because you can't play the sideboard all-stars really very easily in your main deck like Graft Digger's Cage or whatever. So I think that Nio and Noda would be my number one deck, but blue white control is close behind. Coming in in the S tier, and these are decks that make the jump to explore with minimal changes, in some cases, basically no changes, but they're not quite as good overall as Blue White Control or Nia Winota. Starting with 
Mardu Grease Fang. Mardu Grease Fang, this is another deck that gets a little bump in best of one because it's so hard to hate on in best of one. It loses basically nothing. You lose an Urborg in the mana base, which doesn't really matter. But the game plan of filling your graveyard, getting up our healing in there, getting it back with Grease Fang, we've seen that be really good in Pioneer. We've seen it be really good in Historic on Magic Arena. So I have little doubt that this is going to be a really popular strategy. And again, if you're playing best of one in specific, this might even deserve a place along with Winota as one of the best decks in the format because it's hard to play the graveyard hate that really hates on this deck that rests in peace and so forth in your main deck if you're playing best of one so a little bit better in best of one but whether you're playing best of one or best of three i expect mardu grease fang to be a big part of the explorer meta we also have two sacrifice decks that make the jump from pioneer to explore pretty easily jun sacrifice and then also racto sacrifice they basically lose nothing uh storm breath dragon random sideboard card not really worried about sideboards sideboards are meta specific format specific the sideboard cards that you're going to want in Explore are probably going to be different than Pioneer because you're trying to improve different matchups. You're hating on different decks. So I'm not really worried about Storm Breath in the sideboard. I'm sure that's easy enough to replace. Otherwise, you got your cats, you got your ovens, you got your Mayhem Devils, you got your Corvald. You really don't lose anything bringing this deck into Explore. Racto Sacrifice kind of similar game plan another cat oven deck just less colors this one you lose some dread boards i guess in the sideboard you lose the herborg a uh, dreadboard easy to replace we already got bedevil or you can use angrass rampage or something so this is another deck that i expect to be an immediate winner in the explorer meta so this would be my my top tier of the meta honestly like if i was trying to peg the meta of explore right out of the gate i would say nio Anota, blue white control probably the two best decks and then i would say mardu grease fang in one of these sacrifice decks so either jonder rakdos depending on your preference probably also going to be among the most played decks in the format just because they're already really good in pioneer and you don't really lose much of anything porting over to the magic arena card pool so those are the s and double s tier decks then we have a tier decks so a tier decks lose at least something that's kind of important or are relatively low tier in the pioneer meta as i mentioned before we're looking at every deck in the pioneer meta that's at least one percent of the meta so we're going pretty far down the rankings uh so some of these decks like esper grease fang for example it loses some pieces it's kind of a solid tier two deck it's less popular than the mardu grease fang deck in full pioneer same with like the various fires deck fires decks are kind of like tier two tier three in full pioneer they lose a couple of things nothing super essential but anyway starting off our a tier decks which again i think these are going to be good and playable in explore but not as good as s tier decks or double s tier decks so we have esper grease fang which is basically the control build of grease fang we looked at the mardu grease fang deck which is kind of creature heavy you can beat your opponent down if you don't have your combo going your reanimate parhelion going esper grease fang is kind of the opposite this is like full-on control combo where you're trying to fill your graveyard at lightning speed you're kind of using some removal keeping your opponent in check and then trusting that grease fang parhelion is going to be enough more or less by itself to win the game you can see the missing pieces supreme verdict not a big deal dig through time is a big deal in some decks but it's only a one of in this deck so it doesn't really matter collector brutality is a nice option it is very good in the deck turn to discard your parhelion and duress to make sure there's not a way to kill your grease fang but i don't think it's like 100 essential the biggest thing this deck is missing is actually silence silence really really important to force through your combo through counter spells in other instant speed interaction being able to for one mana be like okay you can't do anything during my turn i'm gonna grease fang i'm gonna get back parhelion i'm gonna hit you for a million i'm gonna set up to win the game the following turn is really really huge and we don't have silence on magic arena yet we do have a two mana version of silence but then that slows down the combo by an entire turn so i think that esper grease fang probably gonna be fine in explore but it does lose some things that are kind of important and because you don't have the same backup plan is Mardu, where you can actually kind of win with Croxos and Blood Tithe Harvesters, this build is even more susceptible to Graveyard Hate. Like, if your opponent can stick a Rest in Peace or something, you're going to be in serious trouble because your backup plan is, like, attacking with a Grease Fang, I guess, which isn't very likely to actually work. So keep that in mind. A good deck, but a deck that's going to need a bit of tuning to make it in the explorer format next up we have not one but two fires of invention builds which are like tier three ish in full pioneer maybe tier two on a good day so the first one is a almost creature free 
fires of invention transmogrify list so this list is playing a ton of enchantments chain to the rocks and omen of the seas and all this stuff and the idea is since we only have angel of treachery as our creatures we can make a token with shark typhoon or a token with fable the mirror breaker and then transmogrify into an agent of treachery start stealing our opponent's lands hope that that's enough to win the game so that's one option as you can see it really only loses chained the rocks and a couple random sideboard cards i think chained to the rocks is pretty replaceable you can play faithful absence or whatever it should be easy enough to replace a removal spell the other build of fires is fires friends this is a straight up super friends deck in this one it loses supreme verdict but we already talked about this there's plenty of rest to replace supreme verdict so that's not really a big deal it loses one planeswalker in elspeth sun's champion uh, but i think again we have so many planeswalkers even though elspeth sun's champion is really solid i don't think the drop off to the next best planeswalker is really going to be a deal breaker in explorer so I think that both of these decks are going to make the jump. I think, are they going to be top tier? Probably not. Probably like tier two options, but definitely worth keeping in mind, especially if you're an arena player. Because on arena, remember, uh, we don't have Fires of Invention. It was banned and then Wizards brought it back, but they brought back this new nerf version that costs more mana and all this stuff. So this is your chance to actually play real fires, not fake fires, not eroded fires, not nerf fires. So keep that in mind. This is something unique about this format that you really haven't seen on Magic Arena in a while. So if you're a fire, Players fan, these decks give you two options that might not be top tier, but should be very playable in the Explorer format. Then we have Rakdos Midrange. Rakdos Midrange, this is another deck that I think is going to make it, although it is missing one really big piece. Uh, Dreadbore, again, not a big deal. You can play Bedevil. There's tons of good Rakdos removal. The big loss is actually Kalitas Trader of Get, which is kind of a devastating card. Uh, it's so good against Aggro. You slam this against Aggro, and it's really hard for them to win, and it's not really Placeable. There's just not another creature available that does what Kalitas does, hating on the graveyard, getting a bunch of life, getting really big. The good news is, really, this is like a Jun style deck. This is just trying to play all the good removal, all the good creatures, and mid-range your opponent into oblivion. So even though losing Kalitas really hurts, I think that this deck will still just keep going and just replace it with more planeswalkers, replace it with more threats, just find another good thing. So even though there's not another Kalitas, and Kalitas is really good, I don't think it's essential for Rakdos mid-range working really what makes it work is it's just a pile of removal and value so those are our a tier decks decks that i think are definitely going to be a part of the explorer meta although maybe not tip top tier next up we have three b tier decks so these are decks that i think are probably going to see some play in explore but are going to need meaningful changes because they are missing important pieces so number one is mono red aggro mono red aggro this is the other pillar of full pioneer nia winota mono red aggro azorius control that is the top tier of the full pioneer meta however unlike the other two top tier decks mono red actually loses two important pieces first off it loses eidolon of the great rebel and this is really the biggest loss because there's just not a replacement uh, you can play i guess cemetery gatekeeper is like the next closest thing but it is quite a bit worse than Eidolon so it's just not another card that does what Eidolon does the other loss is Monastery Swift Spear, and Monastery Swift Spear is also tough to replace. There's not another prowess one drop in mono red in the format, so you can't just like throw in the next best option. On the other hand, there are plenty of one drops. You can play Reinforced Thrown in, Falcon Wrath Pit Fighter, Get to Lava Runner. And speaking of Get to Lava Runner, I think one possibility for mono red is maybe it becomes a more wizardy deck. Like if you play Get to Lava Runner over Swift Spear, then you play Wizards Lightning and be more of like a burn heavy style deck. So so I think that mono red aggro will be a part of the meta in explore I'd be surprised if the deck doesn't exist but it is going to need some pretty big changes because it loses those two really important pieces that seem play in pioneer so it's going to be some sort of rebuilt mono red list but I think that whatever people end up with is probably still going to be decent we also got speaking of mono color aggro decks mono black aggro mono black aggro also loses a couple of pieces uh blood soak champion one of its one drops is gone also mutavolt is kind of a painful loss in the mana base we're going to see this hit a couple of different decks but i think you can survive without mutavolt you could play the next best option you can play faceless haven if you want to not as good but to get the job done you play more hive of the eye tyrant so there's certainly possibilities for replacing it the good news is i think all of these losses are replaceable blood so champion not as good but gutter bones kind of does the same thing as a recursive savannah lions effect and then as we talked about mutavolt you're not going to find as efficient 
ancient of a creature land, but you can still make the deck work with something like Faceless Haven or more Hive of the Eye Tyrants. So you lose a bit of power, but again, I think this deck's probably going to be a part of the meta. Last, we have one more mono colored aggro deck in mono blue spirits. This one is missing a single card, but it's actually a pretty impactful card, and that is Mausoleum Wander. Mausoleum Wander is really good in this deck. It gets big, it slows down your opponent's removal and wrath, but the big problem is the drop off to the next best mono blue spirit one drop is absolutely huge because we already got ascendant spirit and spectral sailor in the deck the next best option is draft chafty lantern bearer i think which is just not a playable card so i think you can drop mausoleum wander you can play more bigger spirits maybe go more spectral adversaries or other top end stuff more icon of ancestries the downside is losing one drop does minimize the power of your curious obsessions and the best thing this deck does is slam a curious obsession session on a one drop and protect it and snowball that card advantage into a win so I'm a little concerned about that it's also possible that maybe it just drops the spirit theme maybe rather than being mono blue spirits maybe it's just like mono blue tempo and you're a curious obsession deck with a bunch more counters that doesn't really care about the spirit type so losing mausoleum wander does make me a little skeptical is going to require a bit of a rebuild but I think that some sort of mono blue deck can probably still work next we have C tier decks so C tier decks are decks that honestly lose a lot to the point where maybe they don't really exist in the Explorer format. So C tier deck number one, we have five color humans, five color humans. It loses a pretty big list of playable cards. Experiment one, Mantis Rider, Reflector Mage, and it also loses mana confluence. And I know we've said, okay, we're not really concerned about lands. Lands are easy to replace, but there is a little bit of an exception here because five colors is kind of tough and losing a five color land that's played as a three of in the deck is really a big deal for the mana base. However, the bigger problem is Reflector Mage and Mantis Riders are two of the best cards in this deck. Experiment one, whatever, you can replace that with something. But losing the two, Two big three drops that are just so so impactful and powerful I think kind of just kills five color humans my guess is we see white black humans be the dominant take on humans in explore at least starting off I think five color probably gets there eventually but white black loses kind of nothing you lose mean in the mana base we already talked about this you can replace that with another creature land not going to be as good but you don't lose any of your actual humans and we know that cards like Thalia's lieutenant cards like Luminarch Aspirant those are really powerful cards so that that's my guess for humans is that people trend towards white black just because the mana is going to be better and if you don't have access to mantis rider and you don't have access to reflector mage there just isn't that big of a push or reward for being in five colors so you get worse mana and you don't get the good payoffs for being in five colors so you might as well just play the more consistent build in white black humans next up in c tier we got two is it decks first off is it phoenix and this is a tough one as you can see at this list up at the top, the deck loses a lot of cards. The biggest obviously being Thing in the Ice, that's a huge one. Also Treasure Cruise, also Temporal Trespass, all the Delve spells. Those are pretty big losses. Thing in the Ice though is, that's really the killer. Like Thing in the Ice is what this deck is about in Pioneer alongside Arclight Phoenix. So I think that because of these losses, Pioneer is at Phoenix just doesn't exist in the Explorer format. You don't have the pieces to make the same deck work. On the other hand, Arclight Phoenix is still pretty good, so I wouldn't be surprised if someone found a way to make Arclight work. Maybe it's more of like a prowess deck with sprite dragons and crackling drakes. Maybe that's the pathway it goes. Kind of more like almost historic is it Phoenix because you don't have the thing in the ice and you don't have the delve spells. So I think that someone will harness the power of Arclight Phoenix, but you definitely can't just take the pioneer build and play it in the explorer format. Way too many things are missing. And the same is mostly true of is it control, which is basically also a thing in the ice deck playing a lot of the same spells uh, treasure cruise thing in the ice except you're replacing your arc light phoenixes with like narsets and wheels and nibs the other big loss here is collective defiance i can't believe i'm calling collective defiance a big loss but collective defiance has developed into a staple in these decks because of the way you can wheel someone with narset out and we don't have that in the explorer format as well so i think <sighs> The same thing's mostly true. If you want to make Is It Control work, I'm sure you can build the Is It Control deck, but without Thing in the Ice and without Treasure Cruise and without the easy wheel lock of Collective Defiance in Narset, 
I kind of wonder why you would play this over something like blue white control. Like what's the appeal to is it control? Cause blue white control is better than is it control in pioneer anyway. And it loses nothing. Is it control worse than blue white control? And it loses a ton of stuff. So I expect that we'll see, is it just kind of fall by the wayside as it control colors. And if people figure out a way to make it work, it's probably going to be the Phoenix build rather than the control build. Finally, we got three F tier decks and these are decks that I don't even think you can really make them work in the Explorer format, at least not at this point, eventually as we get more cards. But number one is Bant Spirits. So we talked about Mono Blue Spirits, Missing Mausoleum Wanderer, Bant Spirits. It's a collected company three color deck. And along with Missing Mausoleum Wanderer, you're also missing Selfless Spirit, one of the key creatures in the deck to protect against removal. And you're also missing Spell Queller, just one of the best spirits in the entire format, the Mana Confluence too, not that that really matters to the deck. So I think that you're just missing too much. I think if you want to play a Coco deck, you definitely can, but I don't think it'll be Spirits. I don't think there's any reason to be playing the Supreme Fan Phantoms and then Purian Eagles if you don't also have access to all the good protection stuff, the Spell Quellers, the Self of Spirits, the Mausoleum Wanders. So I'm sure we'll have some sort of Coco Pile deck, but I don't think it's going to be tribally based. Finally, there are two key combo decks in the Pioneer format. Uh, number one, Hidden Stirrings. Number two, Jeskai Ascendancy. Hidden Stirrings kind of fighting with Azuri's Control, Mono Red, and Nayu Inota to be a tier one deck. I mean, if you want to put it in tier one, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna quibble with that. I think that these three are like a little bit ahead, but Hidden Stirrings is a very powerful deck. And then Jeskai Ascendancy, a little bit less popular, but still a solid like tier two, tier three style deck. And these decks just won't exist. The cards don't exist in the format. To make these archetypes work, Ascendancy combo, you're missing literal Jeskai Ascendancy. Normally when your deck name has a specific card in it and that card does not exist in the format you're trying to play, your deck's just not gonna work. So I think that's definitely true of Jeskai Ascendancy. I don't even think there's a way to rebuild it or do something similar because Jeskai Ascendancy is just the heart and soul and the only card that really matters in this deck. So sure you're missing other stuff, digs and Sylvan carry adds and whatnot, but really until Jeskai Ascendancy makes it to magic, arena this archetype just won't be a thing in explore finally we have hidden stirrings and the same thing we just said about jessica ascendancy applies here uh hidden stirrings just isn't on arena but it gets even worse not only are you missing hidden stirrings you're missing thespian stage an essential combo piece you're missing uh pour over pages one of the best card draw effects in the deck you're missing behold to beyond i guess dark petition is actually kind of relevant so you're missing a ton of pieces here so this one might even be worse than Ascendancy. Like, if they print Jeskai Ascendancy, I think that someone will make an Ascendancy combo deck work, even with the other missing pieces. On the other hand, if they print Hidden Stirrings, I don't think that Hidden Stirrings is going to work yet, because I think you need additional help. You need the Dark Petitions, you need the Pour Over Pages, you need the Sylvan Scryings or the Thespian Stages. So this is another one that It'll get there eventually, but for the time being, it's just not going to be a thing. And honestly, I'm kind of happy about that. Personally, uh, I find Ascendancy Combo and Hidden Stirrings to be the two most annoying Pioneer decks to play against. They're really the two Storm style, Egg style combo decks in the format that have these big turns that take forever and you sit there and whatever. Uh, and I think that maybe not having them in Explore, at least right off the bat, might actually be a good thing. So these are decks that'll get there eventually. Sooner or later, we'll have full Pioneer and then all these decks will exist but right now don't even bother trying to build hidden stirrings or ascendancy combo or even bad spirits because there's just not enough pieces to make it work so if you add all this together it leaves us with something like this uh double s tier my picks for best decks in the format winota blue white control s tier sacrifice decks and also mardu grease fang really good don't lose anything a tier decks decks that should be pretty good but gotta do a little bit of rebuilding work as per Grease Fang, the more controlling build, uh, the two Fires decks in Rakdos midrange, B tier, gonna need a lot of work, but could still be part of the meta. Mono Red Aggro, Mono Black Aggro, and Mono Blue Spirits, C tier, decks that are gonna take a lot of rebuilding or may or may not exist. Five color humans, probably better as black white humans, is it Phoenix, and also is it control, and then F tier, decks that 
just don't exist in Explorer, Bant Spirit's Ascendancy combo in Hidden Stirrings. Although, remember, eventually we're going to get all a Pioneer on Arena, and then those decks will exist. So eventually, Explorer is going to become Pioneer, and it's going to look just like Pioneer. So this is for the short term why we're waiting to get the rest of the cards. One more super cool trick I wanted to show you. Uh, if you go to any deck list on MTG Goldfish, especially Pioneer decks, because that's what we're talking about, uh, it's super easy to check and see what is missing from Magic Arena. So let's say, what's a deck we didn't talk about? Uh, Boros Aggro. Go to this Boros Aggro deck list, and this works with all of your decks, all the metagame deck lists. If you go to Edit Copy down here, click on the Edit Copy button, this is going to give you a new copy of the deck. You can switch the format from Pioneer to Explorer, and then hit Update Preview, and you're going to see a list of all the cards that are not legal in Explorer or available on Magic Arena pop up. Uh, in the case of this Boros deck, <laughs> kind of gets wrecked. You don't really have any of the important cards in this deck, but that's a really easy way that you can do a quick check and see what's missing if you find a Pioneer deck that you think you might want to play in Explorer. Anyway, that's my Pioneer to Explorer tier list, so let me know what you think. What are you hyped to play in Explorer? Are there other Pioneer decks that might be able to make the jump? Are there any crazy brews you're working on? I love to hear about them. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope it was helpful, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed it help us out by clicking that like button down below and to keep up on all the latest and greatest click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos and if you want to check out some of our other sweet videos here and here